have a three apparently not contentious. So, sure. Would you like me to go through the the other properties quickly, or let's do the other ones quickly? Yep. Sure. So, um, uh, we have uh, two other properties um, in the Water Matale Board area: 41 Cheshire Street and um, 108 Hepburn Street. Um, we've consulted with the local board, council departments and CCOs. There's been no alternate service use identified. The Waitemata Matar local board endorses the disposal of both sites, noting they do have a, um, some conditions around 41 Cheshire. They'd like uh, Panuku and the wider council group to use it as some sort of leverage to negotiate easements to the Parnell train station and um, adjacent pedestrian routes um, beside the railway line, and we're quite happy to do that work. Quite happy with that, Councillor Lee. You're happy with that to improve things at the railway station? Yes, good. Right. Um, sorry, Councillor. Um, we've also got nine Matama Road, Glen Eden. Uh, it is a narrow strip of reserve um, subject to the Reserves Act 1977. Um, it was reviewed following um, an inquiry from the adjoining, adjoining landowner. Um, Waitakere Rangers Local Board support the disposal um, and just noting that the final revocation. <coughs> um, or the reserve status will be subject to completing the statutory requirements of the Reserves Act. Uh, one more quickly, um, 58.7 Rollins Ave is a privately owned unit. Um, what we're seeking to do here is get the approval to transfer the commented option um, to acquire it when the owner wishes to sell and we're looking to transfer that to Housing New Zealand. Mangakiki Tamaki local boards endorses the transfer as they did similarly when council also dis disposed of three other units in the block in 2013. Okay. All right. Well, I won't. Are there any questions on any of those? No. Um, work mm. 41 Cheshire. Is that right that, it, that it's um, covered in bush at the moment? You see that here, it's the, uh, the weed infested uh, steeple, steeple side. So, what I'm asking is, is it covered in. in any kind of bush at all, or is it just weeds, and what kind of weeds? Predominantly weeds, um, I think it's nightshade, and a bit of wattle. <laughs> so what will it be covered in when we've sold it? We are looking to dispose, sorry, through the chair, we are looking to dispose the adjoining landowner, uh, who is Somerset Group Holdings, uh, retirement home. They are looking to incorporate that into their uh, retirement oh, development. Yeah. No, no issue with what they're going to do with it, but I just want to know, will we be driving, will we be, we be on the train seeing seeing just the back of a house or, or the back, or will we be still be seeing something green? What's, what's disturbing me is that, I know it doesn't fit, in, fit into the car parks policy, but what's disturbing me is that we're coming in on the train now and all we're seeing is the backs of houses. Uh, through the chair, um, council hasn't seen the resource consent that has been submitted by Somerset as yet. We believe it will be um, potentially an eight-storey development. So, number, so for you, Chair, I do have another question on number C. Uh, what's C covered in? Sorry, can you just repeat the question? Freeman's Bay. Yes. Uh, sorry, uh, English. Uh, what, what's covering that land? Uh, through the Chair at the moment, it's a grass bank and there is a ele electricity transformer box on the property. There's no trees or anything like that on it? Um, there's a couple of uh, exotic shrubs. So there are no natives? No natives, no. Okay. But it's next to a reserve, is it? Is that right? Yes, through the chair, it is adjacent to a private reserve, which is um, uh, backs onto the adjoining um, apartment blocks. Um, so a bird doesn't know the difference between a private reserve and a normal <laughs> reserve. So, so there is a reserve next door. Yes, through the chair, there's uh, quite a large number of private reserves in that um, suburb, which are legacy of the 1972 um, Auckland City Council redevelopment, which used to be a slum area. And Thank they goodness they're not owned by Auckland Council. They'd be all be sold by now. Thank you. <laughs> right, there's no, so we seem to be, sorry, Councillor Lee. Yes, I, I'm, I raised concerns about the disposal of 41 Cheshire Street, Parnell, uh, given its strategic location <coughs> to the Parnell uh, train station. I note the local board um, has raised concerns about this and I know that uh, Auckland Transport is in negotiations uh, with Somerset um, Holdings or Somerset Group Holdings um, regarding a development they have um, adjacent to um, 
that property or near uh, nearby and adjacent adjacent yeah. um, the area is strategic a another piece of land um, not owned by the council was actually sold before the, the council or, or rather Auckland Transport could acquire it um, which created some difficulties um, in arranging um, easements uh, and so on, linkages to the station. I, I um, would be concerned um, that this is sold before we have a full report from uh, Auckland Transport. Uh, yes, through the chair, um, Council Lee is referring to 23 um, Cheshire Street. So it's actually... Uh, 41. Uh, apologies. Um, the negotiations for Parnell train station are at 23. That, that's the adjacent property. Um, so it's actually the land advisory team and community facilities are leading those negotiations between um, Kiwi Rail and Somerset. And as mentioned previously, we would look at using potentially 41 Cheshire as some sort of leverage to yep. get a good result. That was mentioned earlier. So, so at this stage, um, it's still subject to negotiation rather than disposal? Uh, through the chair, we would need an approval to dispose before we could use um, 41 Cheshire potentially as some sort of leverage. So it's not recommended for disposal? Uh, through the chair, yes it is. It is recommended for disposal? Yes. Well, I can't agree with that. That doesn't make sense. Okay. Right. Any other questions on any of B, C, D, E? No? Right, A. Yes, thank you. Um, I'll just try to answer some of the questions that are raised by the, the local board and uh, uh, the, <laughs> the member of the public. Um, yes. Panuku does have some work being undertaken in the Howick local board area um, at 16 Fensible and 34 Moore Street. Um, that's been identified in the Howick Village Centre plan that the local board adopted in August this year. Um, we are doing some work there and continue, continuing to engage with the local board and, and work um, to a, a good result there. Um, we also are doing um, work at Flatbush, which is briefly touched on by the local board chair in terms of additional land was freed up. Um, to the developer in, in exchange for additional infrastructure works and sports fields. Um, just to clarify, um, 80 Vincent Street is one kilometre from the Howick Town Centre and 162 metres from the New World. Um, we touched on AT's parking strategy. Yes, it is in the um, policy 2D of that strategy that it, it's not part of their strategy to supply parking to dominant businesses or their staff. Um, there is no legal requirement to provide access to the one end of the adjacent service lane at 186Z Wellington Street. That's the service lane we've been referring to. Um, AT did consider it um, as part of their disposal in 2015 when they released it, whether it was required. They did not legalise any of AT Vincent Street um, to provide access across it to the service lane. Um, just touching on um, the property history, um, yes, five shillings was... Um, the purchase price for the property. We've used the Reserve Bank New Zealand's inflation calculator. Five shillings in 1965 equals between $9.63 and $38.64 today. I'll give you a tenner now for it. <laughs> um, the property is not subject to Section 40, Section 40 offer back obligations in accordance with the Public Works Act because the former owner is a limited liability company that no longer exists, so there is no successor to offer it back to. Um, in terms of public consultation, we have engaged with um, Council's land advisory team. Um, there is no requirement in accordance with the Reserves Act, the Local Government Act, to consult with the public prior to the disposal for this property. Um, just yes, to clarify, the uh, neighbouring business has an expressed interest in acquiring 80 Vincent Street for parking purposes. Um, and I emphasise parking purposes, um, so potentially <laughs> there, there still could be parking on the site. Um, and should Council choose not to um, dispose of the property, um, there would be some accounting measures to account for the $250,000 book value transfer from Auckland Transit to Council. So 
not only would council forego the possible 310,000, you'd also have to find $250,000 to transfer to Auckland Transport. If I could just follow up on a couple of points that we've raised as well. Uh, there is no signage or time restrictions on the car parks at this car park. Um, the service lane is vested as legal road, uh, so there's no easements. Um, and just to clarify, we, this property came to us following a review from Auckland Transport, not following a purchaser inquiry. So after the re, um, Auckland Transport reviewed uh, this site along with other car parks which have been before this committee recently, that's when we started work on it. Um, to be honest, we, we'd never looked at it up until then, other than um, I grew up very close to here, so I used to wander up to the shops which are in the middle um, to buy the little bags of lollies um, for 10 cents when I was younger, back from <laughs> my mum used to let my sister and I wander around the streets without any concern, so I'm kind of showing my age there. Um, but yeah, so we then, because there's not much you could actually do with this property other than use it as a car park, we then contacted um, adjacent businesses to see if they were interested in purchasing it. So that was after Auckland Transport had released it to us and also following feedback from the Howick Local Board um, about how much this car park is used. Just with respect to um, the work that we are doing in the Howick area, um, we would very much like to make 34 Moore Street and 16 Fenceville Drive in Howick support a support location for Panuku. Um, 34 Moore Street has been to this committee twice before um, and it's been deferred um, following requests from the Howick Local Board, so we're continuing to work with them. 16 Fenceville Drive, um, we are currently waiting advice from Auckland Transport. Again, we'd very much like to do something there, but Auckland Transport are reviewing uh, its options for, for that site, including the potential to use it for a bus terminal. Um, until Auckland Transport um, have made a decision on that, we can't progress work on that because, as this committee will know, um, until we exhaust all service options for a property, um, we don't bring it before this committee. Um, other than that, happy to answer any questions. Well, just, just through the chair, um, Council Hills did touch on that the um, new AT East Auckland PT service started two days ago, which goes out to the Howick local board area. Councillor Simpson and Councillor Cooper. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, Anthony, you just said something uh, that I picked up on that I didn't quite, I want you to repeat it please. Did you say something that if we don't sell this, that it will, we have to pay, what was it, 250, 300, sorry, can you just mention that again? That was just quite. Uh, through the chair, there's um, between Watercare and Auckland yeah. Transport and Auckland Council, uh, there's a book value transfer that occurs when assets yeah. are transferred. So the book value transfer for this property was, I believe, $250,000. So Council at the moment has already transferred, when this property was transferred to Auckland Council's fixed asset register, $250,000 was um, either transferred or offset against um, Auckland Transport for the transfer of this property. Now that's done with the assumption that the property will be disposed of and that cost will be recovered. But essentially, if this property isn't disposed of, Auckland Council will be out of pocket $250,000. Somewhere along the lines, you'll have to check with um, Mr Ramsey for more details on that because I'm not an accountant. It effectively still sits there as an asset, but um, the transfer between CCOs or anything within the family, it's always a book value. It's when we go to sell it, we're, then that's at market value. So, so basically, it's arguably a dead asset. That quite clearly has been said with no parking restrictions or anything on it at all. So it's quite alarming. Councillor Cooper. Thank you. Just around that conversation about the fact that the what we call a service lane is actually a legal road, so no one no one can stop anybody doing deliveries. Does I just wonder if there's been any work, and I know you shouldn't do work before we get a resolution because it costs too much money. Um, how easy would it be to actually build something there, given you've got a service road, almost a legal road there, that would, yeah, it seems to me quite difficult to actually build something on that site? Is that your kind of assessment, if you've gone that far? Yes, through the Chair, as part of the rationalisation process, we do send it to Panuku's development team. Um, they identify there's very limited development opportunities for the site. So the likelihood is that it's probably only use could be a car park? Okay. And through the Chair, that was one of the reasons uh, that we thought sale of this uh, car park to the adjacent businesses um, would be an ideal outcome. That way, um, council isn't um, subsidising parking for private businesses um, and, 
yeah, is um, you know, they're still the, the car park. Yeah, the car park. Okay, the car park. park. The cool. amenity Thank values you. kept the community. Thank you. Yeah, um, is the adjoining landowner that's expressed an interest in buying it for to use as a car park, is that person already using it as a car park? Through the chair, yes. So for he's nothing. willing to buy it to provide parking, but he's currently getting getting for nothing from us. Yes. Okay, thank you. Taken off your property before. Councillor Casey. Right, two questions. One, I want to go back to Cheshire Street, but just on this one, because Auckland Transport didn't legalise it, uh, that makes it okay. It, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. Because it could be built on, it, it may not be a um, you know, huge development, but it could be built on, you're, you're not precluding that. I, through the Chair, sorry, could you just repeat the question? I'm not too sure how to answer that. It, development's not precluded here. Limited, it could be limited development, but it could be built on. Yes, through the chair. If we make that decision today, that is a possibility. So it's one of a range of possibilities. The other thing is that um, you mentioned sale to adjacent businesses, but that's not what's in the report. Adjacent business is in the report. So did you approach all of the businesses that um, access that service lane or just the adjacent business? Uh, through the chair, the adjacent businesses, uh, adjacent, adjacent business, singular, contacted us. Right, so that's kind of weird, given the interest of all the people who access the lane and C use Councillor the Casey, park. remember they can't do anything until we say dispose of. So they've had a business. But they did something. No, they no. went to the adjacent no, business. No, no, the business came to them. The business came to them. They haven't approached anyone. A business came to Panuku. How did the business know that the car park was for possibly being rationalised? Uh, through the chair, it was on the local board uh, agenda. Went to their um, March meeting, I believe. So so it makes it just gives people a bit of a head start if one person, if, we, if we're if we acting on something because there's been one approach where we've heard from other businesses today that... Um, that it, yeah. well, Through the chair, we would work with all adjacent businesses. Um, if this were approved for disposal, we wouldn't simply enter into negotiations exclusively with the one business, given these multiple yeah. parties we could negotiate with. Also, just with respect to any future development of this site, there would, of course, be um, there is limited opportunity, as you rightly point out, for development at the site, and that would have to go through standard um, resource consent process and regulatory processes. With the service lane at the back, I think it's highly unlikely that council would um, essentially create a dead end service lane um, and allow development happening here. I mean. Committee members might in another committee, but I see that as being quite unlikely. But there is that process to go through. Yep, thank you. Just on 41 Cheshire Street, bothers me a wee bit that the local board wanted to make sure that the easements for cycling and the access to Parnell train station, they wanted that to be part of the negotiation, but the resolution doesn't say that. It was subject to, but you haven't, you've only got up there subject to statutory processes, which is not the same as that. And I just wondered if through the chair we could look at adding in what the local board wanted, which is to make sure that the easements are in place for both the train station and cycling. Yes, through the chair, the, the advice to the local board was that we, we can't impose conditions relating to another property when we're discussing 41 Cheshire for disposal. The, the conditions that the local board were referring to were for 23 Cheshire Street, the adjacent property. Oh, that's not clear. And through the chair, what we were hoping to do was use this um, property, um, I'm giving away our negotiating hand here, but using this property um, as leverage so that we could ensure we got those outcomes, which is what we've tried to um, report on. Yep. Yeah, so how do you... And it's been said three times. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't catch it. Finished? Yep, I'm off. Councillor Casey. <laughs> Councillor Lee. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm... I must confess, um, I'm a little bit confused about the actual location. I uh, take it that the rectangle highlighted um, in green is, is the property for sale? Yep. Yep. So that it's is quite faint, but it's there. Yeah. I, I don't think the, the local board was confused about its location, and I think their um, the conditions um, they've stated are fair and reasonable, um, but they seem to be, what you're saying is that they 
had the wrong place in mind, which I think is surprising. Councillor Lee is talking about Cheshire. Yep. Um, so, uh, Mr Chairman, I, I, I don't want to impede um, the sale, but it's, the fact is that this is adjacent to the Somerset property, which who the company is in negotiations with Auckland Transport about rearranging um, <coughs> the various properties to enable sensible easements. Um, <coughs> still owned by the council, and I, not sure because it, there's nothing explicit in here about Auckland Transport's position. Um, that they are fully across it, whether the infrastructure chief infrastructure officer is fully across um, this uh, proposed sale, and therefore I would request um, that we um, endorse this, but subject to um, a report back, or whether it's formal or informal, uh, from Auckland Transport, namely its chief infrastructure officer. Uh, through the Chair, it's Community Facilities Land Advisory Services team who's um, leading the negotiations of the easement and working with Auckland Transport on that, not Panuku. We, we, we have been in consultation with the um, Land Advisory Services team as part Th of our That's background. what I'm worried about. Um, this is not joined up thinking by the look of it. That really concerns me and I think there needs to be... I'm not raising objections to other proposed sales here, but I think this is very important and I don't think we've ticked all the boxes and the land was acquired for a purpose. Um, um, it is now um, much more important than it was a couple of years ago uh, or even a year ago. Uh, there is a working railway station there and negotiations ongoing between Auckland Transport and uh, Somerset Group Holdings. Um, and this could be helpful, but or it may not. But when you look at it on the map, um, it's right next. It's centrally placed, uh, right next to a, a car parking bay, um, and the possibility of an easement there, just as the local board has identified, uh, would be sensible. However, uh, I don't know, but um, I would like to be assured. Um, that Auckland Transport have taken this into account in regard uh, to their, with their negotiations with uh, Somerset Group Holdings. So I, I, I would like to add that in the, as a request, Mr Chairman, and um, if, it's, if it, that box can be ticked, then I won't have any objection. So, Councillor, on, on page 83, the local board's quite clear in, in paragraph number eight, um, its recommendation, and, and <coughs> it's been said four times now, about the aim to use it as leverage in order to achieve the outcomes you're after. Your local board seems quite happy that this could be disposed and used as leverage to achieve the outcomes at another site, number 21, if I'm right, or 23. 23. Exactly, um, uh, uh, Mr Chairman, that's quite sensible, but this shouldn't be sold because our recommendation doesn't reflect at all um, the conditions um, placed on it by uh, Waitamata Local Board. Um, and, and, and therefore, if you could include the, the Waitamata Local Board's um, uh, conditions, uh, that may do the trick. I, I'd rather hear directly from Auckland Transport, um, who is across, which is across the full picture of uh, land negotiations with Somerset Group Holdings. That's all I'm asking. So Letitia is going to give a, a, a process uh, answer here. Through the Chair, can I recommend that um, we amend B, uh, we could um, put a part two on there, saying something along the lines of support Council's land advisor, uh, stakeholder and land advisory um, team continuing negotiations with the regarding easements for pedestrian and cycling access, something along those lines, because that is work that the 
um, council stakeholder and land advisory services team are undertaking um, on behalf of Auckland Transport or with Auckland Transport. Leticia, just start again. And if you look up, we've got, we're on our way there. Support. Land uh, stakeholder and land advisory services team. And, and community facilities. Uh, um, to progress easements or negotiate easements regarding for sorry for pedestrian and cycling access negotiate easements for yep. okay well that's going up but I think that's going to do the trick for mm -hmm. councillor Lee one one of the board so we'll just move on to councillor Newman in the meantime Thank you. With respect to 80 Vincent Street, how I come a bit on the fence here, but um, you uh, and Councillor Casey addressed the issue of the um, of an interest from a business owner. You obviously haven't undertaken a negotiation with a business owner, although it has been referred to. I'm not so keen on a disposal to a business owner. I would be more comfortable. Uh, with the disposal of the site to a body corporate of adjacent business owners, plural. Is that an option <coughs> here? Uh, through the chair, uh, a body corporate doesn't exist. Yep. Uh, we would, if this was approved for sale, then contact all um, adjoining property owners and seek uh, expressions of interest from them. They would be more than welcome to advise us if they were interested in forming a body corporate to purchase um, this this property. The problem is that the report that you've written includes a recommendation which provides no sort of comfort around that. I would be more comfortable, for example, if it stipulated um, approval subject to um, uh, to a uh, to uh, I know that the legal entity doesn't exist yet, but if a body corp could be established um, for that purpose, um, then to me that would probably go some way towards satisfactorily resolving this because one, the site has to be a car park and two, um, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, necessarily facilitate a situation whereby one business owner becomes dominant but if it was to an entity of business owners um, adjacent to the site who all have an interest and all own it, then that to me seems like a workable compromise. I'm not quite sure how you can get that, but I would want to see that in the recommendation. Through the chair, um, the, the recommendations that we do are as broad as possible based on advice from council's uh, legal team. Uh, historically, we at times made our resolutions quite narrow and some of the um, governing body members who were here on the first and second term will remember us having to come back um, to get amendments <coughs> to those resolutions because um, <coughs> they, they were so narrow that um, if circumstances changed, we couldn't do anything with them. So this is, um, and I note that Bram's not here at the moment for us, I'd get him up here to um, support this. <coughs> it's based on advice from the legal team. Uh, I would be very hesitant, I do hear and appreciate what you're saying, but I'd be very hesitant to um, have a resolution that required us to sell to a body corporate that doesn't yet exist. Um, this is a level of information that we don't have from the adjoining businesses. We don't know if they're interested in them. Um, in doing that, we don't, we don't know the background of the businesses. Um, we don't even know if a legal entity such as a body corporate would be how they wanted to work. So it would be very, very narrow. What I could say is that um, based on the circumstances of this property, we would seek to keep it as a car park. There is other off-street car parking available in the area. Um, I do hear what you're saying, but this is basically a starting point for us to try and negotiate the best outcomes to council with the adjoining owners. Insurance. Councillor Darby. No, I don't have a question. Councillor Hills, we have Councillor Hills, Councillor Quacks, Councillor Wayne Walker. It's 1.30, um, quite a long session so far. <coughs> Councillor Hills. Um, yes, Excuse just an observation. Sorry. Obviously, I've been looking around the other businesses and many of them do have closed off lane waves with no through road. But the other thing is, and it's probably because I've noticed, but you can uh, double check. Actually, all the adjoining properties have their own car parks except for the, the dairy pharmacy and like so 
on the outer perimeter, they all have their own car park apart from the dairy. So is it assumed, would, can you say who is interested in the purchase or no, not at this point? Uh, through the chair, no, unfortunately we can't. Um, okay. All we have done is inform them of the process that's required um, and then subject to approval, then we could go back to interested parties. Uh, through the chair as well, there is um, public car parking out the front of the dairy. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, yeah. But they obviously can't have their staff parking there all day. No. <coughs> No, there is, um, it, it is in a suburban area, One, um, like I say, I know very well, there is a lot of off-street car parking in the area. My brother-in-law actually owned a house for quite a while when he first met my sister, um, just up the road from, <laughs> I'm going into way too much detail now. Um, my mum and stepdad also shop at the New World that was referred to as well, so I'm really going into too much detail. But no, my brother-in-law owned the place just up the road and there's a lot of off-street car parking, so um, yeah, we'd, you know, go up there and it's free and it's available all day and um, you know I'd swing around to my brother-in-law's place for a glass of wine back before him and my sister moved to Australia and um, I never had any trouble finding car no, parking. No, 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 no. <laughs> through the chair, wait till we do the Takapuna properties on yeah. the Takapuna board. <laughs> right, from sweets to wine. Um, just, Leticia, just on that resolution there and B, should should that say for pedestrian, pedestrian cycling access to the Parnell railway station? Yeah. Uh, yes, good point, Mr. Chair. Yeah. So we add that at the end, Councillor Lee. Uh, uh, through the chair thank and, you, thank you. So, so and oh, yeah. th there's two there. There's one access to the station, and there's um, the, the, the cycleway alongside the railway lines we need to incorporate. And for the tunnel, so yeah. access to Parnell railway station and cycleway and cycleway and adjoining cycleway. We have Councillor Clax, Councillor Wayne Walker and Councillor Lee again. Yeah, thank, uh, thanks Mr Chairman. I just uh, have a question initially um, and I, I'm, I'm really pleased that Letitia is so <laughs> familiar with this area because I suspect that most councillors aren't and it's a very constrained area in terms of. But <clears throat> my, my question is the area between uh, Nelson Street that borders Nelson Street, Wellington Street, Moore Street, and, um, and Elliott Street. What is that zoned right now? And what is it zoned under? What's it zoned under the unitary plan? Um, through the chair, I just need to check that. Um, <clears throat> I think that's quite important, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, because what's happening in this area. Um, there's more and more traffic being generated by this very, very small um, industrially, well, it's not a, it's a commercial area. Um, and, and I think probably if uh, the Howick Borough Council um, had known how much traffic was going to be generated on our roads over the years, they probably would have never put a commercial centre in here because the roads are very narrow. Um, and so, it's very, it's a constrained area by a valley, very narrow roads, and on both sides of that valley, uh, it's residential. So there's a lot of rat running that goes through there as well. Um, and the, the reason why I wanted to get a answer to my question about what that zoning is, uh, because if that's mixed commercial or uh, if that's mixed use, uh, that would even generate more traffic. Uh, and more reason to not sell this car park, in my view. Uh, through the chair, I've just had a quick look on the um, ge on geo maps. Uh, there's a mixture of business, light, industrial zone, mixed housing, suburban, and one moment. There's a lot of zones in this area. Mixed housing, urban, um, further up, as um, you refer to the top of Moore Street, up towards there. Um, right. Okay. So this could this could. Uh, potentially be um, uh, mixed, mixed housing, urban or suburban? This, this particular area is um, neighbourhood centre and then there is also some, hang on a moment, there is also some business light industrial zone, so that will be around, um, you know, there's the panel beaters, all of that um, around that area, there's the um, liquor land. Um, to the, if you look around Vincent Street, up towards Elliott Street. Yeah. 
it is mixed housing urban right. down towards um, Rodney Street, um, Pegler Drive, um, Union Road, downwards to Andrew <coughs> Road. It is okay, mixed so housing suburban. Yeah, probably yeah. don't need to. So we, the, yeah, Mr. Like Chairman, but the point I've made so was uh, has been made there was this is going to be uh, probably an intensified area uh, with more with more traffic going here more need for uh, parking than less. Um, I, even just the New World supermarket has probably generated a lot more traffic than the build, building that was there previously, uh, which was the old Halligan, Halligan Pakaranga Times. Um, so there's a lot more uh, traffic going in here and, and you know, both Councillor Stewart and I have in the past probably got ourselves offside somewhat with the local board uh, because we were in favour of the disposal of 34 Moore Street uh, or, or investigating the disposal of 34 Moore Street and Fensible Drive. Um, I can't support, I, I quite frankly, I can't support this. I don't know where sta the Council Stewart stands on this, but I certainly can't support this and I, I won't be. Councillor Wayne, Wayne Walker, Councillor Lee, and Councillor Sanderson. Cool. Um, I've got a couple of questions, Mr. Chair, that uh, essentially they're rhetorical questions. Um, <laughs> oh, no, Wayne, 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 Wayne. Now, no, a specific question. Okay, well, yeah, then I'll ask them. Yep. I will ask them, sir. Yep. Getting cold. And the bigger question is where does this exercise of selling these local parking areas stop? and what constraints are around this. If you cast your gaze around Auckland, there are hundreds, conceivably yep. thousands, so, so of Walker, I'll localised give you, I'll give you parking the answer, areas. I'll give you the answer to that, and, and it's when we get to the real business of the LTP next April, May on, when we start well, to talk about the fiscal constraints we have, the revenue constraints okay. we have, and the severe I wasn't, shortfall of funding. Through you, Mr Chair, so I wasn't looking for an answer from you because uh, this is not an issue around Letitia, finances. Let, this Anthony, is an issue around Councilor the violence. Walker, Letitia and Anthony are not here to talk about our overall LTP program. They are here to speak specifically to the disposal program, in this case, these properties. So, sorry. Councillor Mike Lee. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Chairman, and I, I wish to thank the officer for assisting us with that addendum, but my um, my problem is that the addendum doesn't really give any direction at all, um, supporting council stakeholder and landed <coughs> advisory services team community facilities um, doesn't mean much. I support the Blues rugby team. <laughs> but why? <laughs> oh, it's not that. You must be one of the three. <laughs> and I'm sure all of you do here. Uh, absolutely. Oh, it hasn't made that three. much difference. So I support, support, you. support is one thing, um, <coughs> Mr. Chairman, but subject to is another thing altogether. So um, as it stands, that that I. Um, doesn't um, is not coherent with the the, the rest of the uh, recommendation, and it doesn't mention the all important Auckland transport. Now, the problem we have in this organisation quite often is a lack of joined up uh, thinking and people yeah, yeah. working in silos. And the fact that we have um, this entity called Stakeholder and Land Advisory Services Team Community Facilities. Um, is great, but it's Auckland Transport that is leading the negotiations with Somerset Group Holdings. And w while I'm happy to support this Department of Community Facilities uh, all day, um, it's not going to help things in terms of negotiating um, with Auckland Transport, so I, I, I wish... So, Councillor Lee, we're just going to clarify that. Who is leading the negotiations? 
Uh, yes, through the Chair, the um, Stakeholder and Land Advisory Services Team and Community Facilities essentially acts as the Permissions Team for Council-owned property. So they have been the key um, point of contact for both Auckland Transport and Panuku with respect to this. So we have all been working together on this, but in terms of the department that's leading this work, of actually arranging the easements. That's done by the Stakeholder and Land Advisory Services team, not Auckland Transport, which is why I've recommended yep. that it be uh, the Stakeholder and Land Advisory Services team there. They're doing that in conjunction with Auckland Transport, though. Yep, and that's why the mover and seconder are happy with this resolution. So I, 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 I would yep. like, if we could, yep. Mr Chairman, a reference to Auckland Transport in there, um, because it could be taken that you're negotiating with the potential buyer. Um, so Auckland Transport needs to be in that recommendation. And to be fair, um, this is quite different from what um, the Waitamata Local Board asked for. They said subject to, and I don't see that word subject to, I just see support. Oh, and you've heard my comments about what supporting does. Yep, uh, well, support stays in there unless there's a further amendment. I'm going to ask Leticia, is it okay to add Auckland Transport and Panuku uh, after facilities? What I'd recommend is after community facilities, it says um, something along the lines of um, <coughs> uh, let me think. That's and right, take your time. In conjunction with or um, Councillor, why don't we have working with Auckland yes. Transport? Yes, brackets, working with Auckland tr Transport and Panuku as required to negotiate. Yeah, that would work. Okay, we won't put a bracket, we'll put a dash before working and a dash after Panuku. Or after required, yep. And could we have, where it's got support, could we have subject to? No, no, no. no. So no. we're putting that up and that is the advice and I think that's really going a long way, Councillor Lee, to, to meeting uh, your concerns and it's reinforcing exactly what the Waitamata local board. Um, well, no, they're up. saying subject to, and I think we we need to respect that, Mr. Chairman. And um, as a governing body, we even take a wider, longer view than the local board. Um, this is part of uh, the strategic rail network. Well, you'd have to put up an amendment and we'll get a second and we'll go through the Can I just thing. So replace sub support with I'll, subject I'll, two? I'll be very, 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 very brief. I just want to confirm a few things. There's been a long discussion and I've waved in and out of consciousness. Um, <laughs> uh, a basically is um, still going to remain a car park if sold. Correct? Uh, through Maybe. the chair, we, we can't guarantee that, but um, certainly... Maybe. The development opportunities are quite limited for the site. Limited to the point that it'll probably be, and you've already been approached by a, a landowner, and you know whether it be a conjoint of landowners or whatever, it's, that's the that's the likely intent, correct? Through the chair, yes. Okay. Second point, uh, the uh, apart, uh, apart from the side of uh, uh, support or subject to, basically we are um, so that so, so that. Uh, number second one is, is in support of the, lo the local board is in support of what we're doing under B, um, because by saying we support, we support, we're basically saying that we're going down that path to make sure that walking and cycling access is part of that without giving away too much commercial leverage. Correct. Through and the all the chair, yes. Right, and then the last ones are all um, approved by the local board. Which just brings me back to the first one, which isn't isn't endorsed by the local board, and their main concern <laughs> is it could be. Um, it, it's a legal legal concern, wasn't it, really, around, you know, when the development was started, what it was there for, and then, so they may, they may if we approve A, end up with the same a outcome anyway, except it's not handed back for 10 bucks. Uh, I'm trying to help. I'm just trying yeah. to, un uh, it's just, you know, I, I don't really, I understand that local boards knows more than, you know, we do about their local issues. So I'm absolutely a huge fan of, of, of getting that input. But I got the impression from listening to you that potentially the, the only option really, because it's a service lane and whatever, will be to keep it as it is and there'll be a potential local buyer that will support the businesses. Through the chair, that's definitely our preference. And just in respect of the, um, I think your question was about some of the legalities yep. um, in history. Uh, the former owner, or un with respect to any offer back under the Public Works Act, 
the former owner um, was... It's a limited liability yeah. company, not, Which not, not longer exists. Not in its existence. Yeah. Okay. So, so that uh, terminates yeah. the public okay. work off the back obligations. Thank you. Just mm. summarising it. Thank you, Mr Chair. Got it. Councillor Walker. Sure. I'll, um, I'll speak to the item now, Mr Chair. Previously, I was engaged in a question which was headed off at the pass. Um, so my concern, and in part I'm speaking to the Chief Executive, is where does this stop? Where does the dismemberment of local parking across the region, which is, I would suggest, a strategic asset as you apply it to a network, stop? These parks have often been put in place through um, consents, through easements, through any amount of negotiation, and they are vital to local businesses. They are vital. Where is the thinking, the foresighting, the bat casting around the parking requirements for autonomous vehicles, for the disruptive technologies that are taking place, for the shared cycle schemes, the shared car schemes that are emerging. The short answer is those, those plans do not exist, yet we are advancing on selling land in advance of that. In other cities, New York and elsewhere, when land comes available from parking, it's also often turned into local parks because there is going to be a requirement for more local parks as we have intensification. Where is the planning for that? The short answer is the planning for that does not adequately exist. And I pin the responsibility for that around this governing body and also the organisation, the chief executive and others and CCOs that support it. And we are derelict currently mm -hmm. in our planning and all that we are doing is flogging off silver in advance of the requirements for the future. It's short-term gain for huge long-term pain and the demise of local businesses one of which I know will be going down to the tubes to the order of a million dollars because of issues around parking. That is what is happening right now under our watch and under the watch of the Chief Executive. So I am stating that this is a concern <coughs> for me and it is a concern for many local businesses and many local communities. Thank you, Councillor Walker. But Council does have an open space strategy and, and my understanding is Auckland Transport have a parking strategy and given you answered all the questions you were going to ask the Chief Executive, he does not have to answer anything. So, but we do have some plans. Um, <laughs> Sorry. So we are back to Councillor Lee, who, who's moving an amendment. Do you have a seconder? Yep. Yep, and what's the amendment? Subject to. Uh, su subject to. Subject to, right. We put up the amendment. We're going to go in purple. Instead of support. Yep. Okay, we have no more speakers and... Um, Right, can you, uh, can well, you I'm going to do is I'm going to deal with the amendment very quite clearly, which is an amendment to the resolution being put up by Councillor Clough and Derby, and it relates to item I or one, I think it's one, Roman numerals. No, Excuse me, Mr. Five. Chairman, can we have officer advice on um, on the amendment, please? And yes, we can. So, Letitia, what does subject two do? To bind your hands or whatever through the chair if we if council stakeholder and land advisory services team comes to us and says actually no um, we don't require easements through this particular piece of land because we've negotiated them elsewhere um, then we're going to have to come back to this committee to actually uh, get the amendment resolution uh, amend the resolution rescinded um, and replaced with a new resolution before we can move on with the proposed um, disposal um, at the moment, as far as we know, um, stakeholder, um, the stakeholder and land advisory services team are progressing uh, the negotiation of these easements. Um, so if it's not required, it just means there's an extra step. Um, there's a delay in Somerset being able to progress their work, etc. cetera. So um, support gives us a bit more room. Okay. Uh, the advice is support gives more room, flexibility, subject is constrained. Thank yeah. you. So, anyone want to speak to the amendment? 
Right. I'm going to put the amendment, which is, as you can see, subject to council stakeholder. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? No. no. Aye. Ooh, what was called by division? So I think Aye, we. Seven. I think we will. Um, so I'm just getting a point of order here. We can do a division after this. We'll do a division. Thank you. Councillor Casey? Yes. Deputy Mayor Cashman? No. Councillor Collins? Four. Councillor Cooper? No. Councillor Darby? No. Councillor Filipaina? He's not here. Councillor Fletcher? No. Mayor Goff? No. Councillor Hills? No. Councillor Hulse? No. Councillor Lee? Aye. Councillor Newman? No. Councillor Quax? No. Councillor Sayers? No. Councillor Say Simpson? Councillor Stewart? No. Councillor Taipari? No. Councillor John Walker? No. Councillor Wayne Walker? Yes. Councillor Watson? Yes. To, it's lost by 15 to 5. So B was put in as part of the substantive, so we don't need to do the new the I in red there. But what I'm going to do here is take A separately and then by division, Mr. Yep, Chair. By division, and then if the meeting's happy, we'll do the other resolutions as a block. So by division, we will just make sure we've got it up there. Yes, we do. A. Howick Street, Princeton Street, and Howick. <laughs> Chair Clough? Yes. Councillor Casey? No. Deputy Mayor Cashmore? Yes. Councillor Collins? Against. Councillor Cooper? Four. Councillor Darby? Four. Councillor Philippaina? Councillor Fletcher? Four. Mayor Goff? Aye. Councillor Hills? Yes. Councillor Hulse? Aye. Councillor Lee? No. <coughs> Councillor Newman? No. Councillor Quax? No. Councillor Sayers? Aye. Councillor Simpson? Aye. Councillor Stewart? No. Member Taipari? No. Councillor John Walker? No. Councillor Wayne Walker? No. Councillor Watson? No. That was quite a good run at the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Vincent Street. Bring we'll finish, mate. Yep, lost. So that will I think it was more a distance run. It will stay as a uh, what, what is the, uh, private public car. Can we just have a current passion? So, so what is the next direction on Vincent Street? Um, uh, basically nothing is really the direction I'd see. It Thanks. just sits there like, as, a, as a car park with no parking meters or anything on it or anything. Uh, Can we just money. get some uh, advice, maybe back to Auckland Transport who control it, to actually put controlled car parking? Because it's potentially car a parking. private car park for the first 12 people that get there in yep. the morning. Point of order, Mr Chairman. Yep. Once a vote has been taken, there can be no further discussion on this matter. That's all right. So um, we're getting the local council to bring up a valid point of order. There can be no more discussion, so it will stay exactly as it is. No more discussion about it. Thank you. All right. So we now move to the others, B, C, D, and E, and, and, and that's it. Same movers and seconders. All those in favour? Sorry, can Aye. I just Aye. check? That, that, um, I thought that was lost, that... Excuse me, we're in the middle of a vote. Not a Sorry, I'm just questioning no. what we're voting on. No, no, B is the, the B one is still in there, but the word support is there. What was lost was the amendment, which was subject okay, to. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Aye. 
I'm putting B, C, B and E. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? And against, right. Right, we're going to break for lunch. And I'm sorry about uh, to Auckland Transport who've just arrived, but it's going to be quarter past two when we come back.